Oh, Seo. Cherokee greeting and wave the great feather. Hey, we're still in the month of June, and here in Native America, we have a name for this month. If you can go over here, you'll see her. This is an Edward Curtis photograph of a Muscularo maiden known by the name of the Strawberry Moon. That's our name for the month of June. So you can see this beautiful woman here in the strawberry. Also, stra strawberries are loved by bears and you can go down here. June is also the month of the bear dance, and that is the spring renewal, the way to Boyum. And go down here and you can see another bear here. It's also the month of the summer solstice. Today we're focusing on the bear and the bear dance. So now I can come back here and I have a piece. The evolution of the bears. Where did the bear really come from? The evolution of bears as we know them today started around 30 million years ago. Their ancestors evolved into a family of small mammals known as the meocids. The bears, small bears, and also the canines developed from these Meocids. Some of the canine species resembled bears, and we refer to them as bear dogs or raccoon dogs, as in Japan. You can go over here and look at this figure here. This is a raccoon dog in Japan, and he is known as Tanuki. And in Japan, he is very much the same character as Coyote is here. So there you see, and he's pretty much outfitted like a folk character. He has a straw hat and he carries a, a gourd and a staff. So he's a very folksy character in Japan. The size and appearance of the bear dog varied from small and coyote-like to big and bear-like. The family of real bears can ultimately be traced back to the oldest, and that's the Ursulus, which was roughly the size of a sheepdog, and he had evolved from the same canine ancestor as the coyote. The bears form a, the real bears, form a separate family within the order of the carnivores. Uh, it can be divided into three subfamilies. There's the giant panda, the speckled bear, and the real bears. The family of the real bears consisted of six different species, all of which are pretty similar. They have strong claws and a robust body, and their diets all pretty much in common. Although they're all omnivorous, their diet is mainly vegetarian. Bears live in different regions of the world from the North Pole to the tropical rainforests. The research type of projects which are run by Bears in Mind Focus mainly focus on the brown bear, but also on the Asian black bear, the Malayan sun bear, the spectacle bear, and the sloth bear. So that's the introduction to the bears. And the oldest bear I have here, you can go up here to the top here, culturally speaking, we're, we're talking about uh, this uh, piece up here I have replicated from an ancient, um, uh, what you could say, rawhide bear mask featured in uh, Maria Gambutis, Gods and Goddesses of Ancient Europe, uh, about seven or 8,000 years old. And these here on the side are not ears, but these are the holes, they're tabs to tie, for a person to tie around their head. So here is my replication of a very, very ancient image for the bear in the culture of the bear. So we still 
maintain you know that kind of kind of thing here. And next you have come here and look at this. This I have actually I would say it's a homage. It's a homage to Northern California. Uh, in recent years there was a terrible furious firestorm in Northern California. And in particular Indian Valley it's called. And that's what I've represented here. Indian Valley uh, gets its name from seeing her visage, visage in a mountain overlooking the valley. And the towns in there are Greenville, Janesville, Taylorsville, and they all burned up. <clears throat> and then uh, Greensville was also the headquarters for the Maidu Nation, and that was called the Brown House Council. I had had also a painting I had done of the Bear Man a long time ago, uh, and a poster photograph of it was installed in the Roundhouse Council, and it also went went up in flames. And so here, I have you know a, a stump, a burned stump. Uh, we drove through there uh, last week, so you see the many burned stumps and the the red feather for the fire, and up here the fur and hair for all of the smoke. And so the Bear Dance had many, many of these people from that vicinity. The Bear Dance was actually in Lassen County, which is adjacent to the Plumas County, where these towns, you know, burned up. So really very much want to know that this is my homage, you know, to those people and for many of the people who attended the Bear Dance with us uh, in Lassen County last week, last Sunday. Up here, this is my painting of the Bear Man for this occasion called the, the Bear Dance. Again, Weta Boyam is the name for this event. And here is a man, and he has, you know, this the fur skin of the bear. And here, this is uh, also called the ceremonial flag, yokai, but it also means the rattlesnake. The rattlesnake and the, the bear have an ancient relationship, and that's part of what is here. On each side, these uh, branches I have are rosemary, or properly rosmarin, meaning mist of the sea, and they stem from the Mediterranean. Their symbolic meaning has long been remembrance and consonance, which is very much what this bear dance is about. And at that point, I want to mention this. Uh, occasion we call it the bear dance and those of us who attended. Uh, the Spanish you know invasion of California was bad enough and seemed to focus more on the lower half of California. But when the Americans invaded in the mid 19th century matters got even worse because the state government promoted a complete genocide of all Native Americans. And for any that may have survived that, the federal government, when it wants, when it went worse, with forced assimilation school for all Native American children, where hundreds, if not thousands, perished. Uh, with all that in view, we're looking at the survivor of this most ancient and vital ceremony we locally call the Bear Dance. So again, everybody who is able to bring that about and to attend uh, there. During the, the bear dance itself, um, it's formed by um, consecutive, uh, consecutive circles. Um, what was the most different were the children. Different in the sense there seemed to be more children there than um, we had seen in previous ceremonies. In this ceremony, again, this was, you know, 
restarted after the COVID because we couldn't do it during the COVID. And I've, I've been uh, aware of, with this man, I don't know, 40 to 50 years, the spare dance. <clears throat> so we can, can see all of that. And so here's what I'm going to, to say on the behalf of the bear dance. Bear dance, here is our wheel of dreams. It carries our voices and makes them turn on the morrow of bone, centered in life, round and rounding about our first world, this strong wheel. We shape our songs upon this wheel and spin the native names of earth and sky, wind, water. Mother Bear, Yonaguzi, and Cousin Kairi, Waya, the paws and claws of our Round Health Council, Anaskei, that is the talking circle. So that's a good clue for me to introduce this painting here. This painting is by Claudia. She's behind the camera there. It's a wonderful painting that encompasses, encompasses you know, our, our mythology here. Here, if we look at this, this, this is the turtle. We have come to call our country Turtle Island. And there's a story of how, how it got to be that. But there's, here's the turtle. And here's the tree. Every culture, every ancient culture anyway, definitely has the tree, you know, the tree of life, the world tree, and, and all like that. And here in our, our subject with the bear, the bear and the tree go together, very much go together here. So here's, here's the tree. And very notably here, this, you know, you can see this would be the skin of the bear. We call it yo, uh, Yonaganai. Yonaganai is the name of the skin of the bear. And here would be, as it would be the bear man, or the person who is going to put this on. When we come to the circle of the bear dance, uh, we will see very similarly uh, this uh, Yonaganai hanging up with the ceremonial flag uh, at one side of the plaza, the circle plaza. And here would be the bear man playing his hand drum, you know, getting ready. And here are the, like, animals and here's a rabbit and a deer and, and, a, and a mouse and up here a bird. So all this you know, represents our first world and that's what we uh, continue to remember here in the bear dance. The only other culture that I know of in the world that has a bear culture is in Japan, the northern part of Japan, Hokkaido, has a people, an aboriginal people known as the Ainu. I don't know anything of their culture of the bear other than just to say that. So that's, you know, very significant. Other people may have bear in their culture, but here the Maidu, or the mountain Maidu of Northern California have endured through everything, you know, to still carry this out. And we consider when we're coming together uh, the Roundhouse Council, but this is also the Creation Lodge. Um, earlier times when I attended there, we all knew each other by our animal names. So in the Creation Lodge, everybody is their animal. Uh, you know, I remember Bobcat was the fellow that, that sort of organized and ran uh, the event. In the story, uh, all the, the animal people were gathered there having their conference and suddenly someone popped up in the middle of that council and everybody was startled and said, wow, <laughs> where did you come from? Who are you? And the answer was, I'm Coyote and I created you. Out here in the world, only Coyote, only Coyote comes out here in the world comes out here in the world to remember every one of you and the animal you are back in our creation lodge and like that. And also coyote does have a function, has a function for 
women, ancient and modern, and present, and that is to return woman to her animal lineage, and with that, her animal instincts. So, you can know that is always what coyote is up to here. Other things that I, that I have here, I want you to look at here, I showed this last week. This is a stone effigy um, from Pyramid Lake, Nevada, and certainly Pyramid Lake and the adjacent um, Winnemucca is a very, very ancient uh, goddess culture. And so that's pretty much how we, we think of this. <clears throat> Again, here is this is I like this one as it's the she bear and she is holding the rosemary. Ro how do you say rose rosemary <laughs> herbs uh, like that. Remembrance and constantness very much goes with that. Now, oh yes, I want I might do a, a little recap here. Um, last time. Two weeks ago now, like that, I did a little rendition of the story called, you know, uh, the uh, Changing Bear Maiden. Changing Bear Maiden is Chekishash uh, meaning the girl that changed into a bear. Now she was, you know, ostensibly a, a normal young female girl, and she didn't like men at all, but she was very attractive and many men definitely, you know, tried to uh, win her attention, but she, you know, rebuffed them all until Coyote came. And Coyote, you know, won all of her contests, and they eventually got together, coupled together, and from that she began to change. They each had their own supernatural power, you know. She has that, that uh, you know, new Yanueva from her womb power, and Coyote has that Iva'a, that supernatural power. So they got together and they kind of exchanged those powers, and eventually she began to transform. She began to transform into the bear. And in the Navajo culture, while various energies, deities, or spirits, what have you, uh, can be summoned, can be persuaded, made offerings to. When it comes to Coyote and the girl who changed into a bear, no persuasion will win them over. Okay, so now we have another one here. We're, now we're talking about the bear man. <laughs> and that is, again, we have a young girl, uh, Namaho, uh, uh, Chiki. It means, uh, you know, like a maiden. Don't you see 10, 12 years old, I think, like that. And she's taken in by a couple of bears just before winter time. In, in winter time, the bears retire into a cave, is what we call it, um, and they hibernate. Although I read they don't completely hibernate, but they do go to sleep, and a lot of their body functions, you know, kind of uh, close down a little bit, like that. And that's definitely the interest of science scientists, you know. Uh, might have some clues. Um, but anyway, that's what they do. And it's during this period, well, they store fat. They store fat is how that they survive during, during this time. <clears throat> and it is also the time that the uh, she-bear, the mother bear, gives birth uh, to her cubs. So here, they've taken in this young girl, and basically they're sleeping. But of course, she still is, is a girl, and she's going to get hungry. So whenever she would get hungry, then Mother Bear puts her paw over the girl's mouth. And from that, the girl uh, receives the fat from the bear, like that. <clears throat> so, her, again, her paw, her paw is feeding the girl. Um, eventually, the girl somehow sees or senses a light come into her belly. And as that swells up, come the spring, beginning early summer, uh, she gives birth, and she gives birth to a boy that looks like a bear. And of course, this must be the very boy that becomes the bear man. So that's how we got that going here. So with that, we'll go to the you know next two things. Let me show you 
this here. This is a medicine shield. Oh, it's a rawhide medicine shield. Um, now there still are some Native American societies, in spite of everything, that have maintained certain things, like saying a woman's society. Uh, I know the Hopi have the Lacan Society of, of the water, water Clan. They're the ones who make particular baskets and have a basket giveaway once a year. And we've known people in that society. Uh, the Cherokee also have a woman's society that is mostly expressed by Jamie Sands in her book of uh, the grandmothers. And then there's the Lakota. These are just the ones that I know of. And the Lakota have also a woman's clan uh, society where the girls being initiated make a shields. So shields maybe from their vision. And so this looks like that. While it doesn't have uh, her name on it, some might have see her name on it. But here is the bear in the bear paws. And then if we go way over here to look at this big uh, shield cover, unreplicated, you can certainly see there's the bear. And this is likely to be the uh, stars forming the Big Dipper or, or the uh, Big Bear. And a lot of bear paws around it. So while you're focusing on that Big Bear paw, let me do this one. I come from the north. I throw dust on me. It changes me. Now I'm a bear when I come to meet you. Send word, Mother Bear. Send word, Mother Bear. Your word is good medicine. My paw is holy. Herbs are everywhere. My paw, herbs are everywhere. Ikiyu gagoti. My paw is holy. Yawai galusidiyu. Everything is holy. My paw, everything is holy. Everybody is sacred. Nigara galusidiyu. Oh, that's a Cherokee. So now we're going to come to the place where I sing some songs, the songs that are sung at the bear dance. Um, when everybody is formed in a circle, these concentric circles, the children in the center and out to the older people, like that, then uh, there are the priests who are the singers. You know, they prepared themselves for this event in fasting and those kind of things. <clears throat> and then the bear man is going to be led by a strong young man who is uh, holding the rattlesnake, the ceremonial flag as we call it. It's a very, very heavy thing with, with a uh, raffia tassels hanging down. And he leads the bear, you know, through the circle of people who, while the priests are singing, we're all dancing in each circle, moving in an opposite uh, direction. <clears throat> and sometimes the bear will uh, paw at a woman's feet and carry her into the inner circle. Eventually, eventually, uh, the rattlesnake and the bear begin to lead off one of the circles. And it winds on up through the trees, you know, through a bit of rough country like that, and eventually winds down to, we have always have a, a, a stream, a water stream uh, going on down there. And there the bear man will take off his you know, yonagai and switch it with the, uh, the uh, uh, what we call boughs. I forgot to say that we all have these boughs with the wormwood or artemisia boughs. Whenever the bear come by, we, stro we stroke uh, the bear's uh, pelt, you know, like that. So when we get down to the stream, then we can dip our bowels into the water and you know, kind of swish it around ourselves and throw our, our bowels now into the flowing stream that's carrying away you know, all of you know, the things that we want to get rid of uh, go flow down the stream and that's how we conclude the bear dance. So now Claudia and I are going to sing some of those bear songs, very short medley, and the first song is going to be the newest song we have heard there.
okay. Bueno, 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 swimming along in the stream but there's this one little fishy he swims along with the stream and that's what we're saying here Who's in this song? See if you hear any of them, right? Century, millennium, or yeah. forever. Thank you. <laughs> 